good, comfortable, bad, and different. You know, rules are rules. Got to put it on. I used to wear it back in Clemson, but I mean, got to do what you got to do. You know, you can complain about it or not, but we got to go on. So it's all good. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. It's been been a minute, you know, and uh, but you know, kind of just doing what you got to do. You know, it's, it's a little heavy, so I can, by the time it's time to take it off, you know, we should be feeling a lot lighter. So you know, trying to find the positives and everything, and uh, we should be well adjusted to the heat. Is it noticeable? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, as far as wearing or like seeing? Well, no, obviously, obviously yeah, yeah. Wearing, I mean, wearing. They said, look, we out there in a whole bunch of little afros. <laughs> 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 no, nah, man, but it, it's a little noticeable. Uh, but it's not overwhelming, you know. It is what it is, and uh, just gotta do what we gotta do. Are you feel hotter? Like, does it? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I, you know, this heat, you really can't run from it. You really can't run from the heat, so, I mean, it's just, just one of the things. How did you find out, like, that you guys were gonna have to wear them? Did they tell you that in a PM meeting? Or um, it was, because uh, when we played the Dolphins in camp last year, they had them, you know, so they weren't like a big secret. Some teams did it, some teams did it, but it was word that every team might have to do it, and we came to camp and everybody, oh, the linemen and backers had it on the helmets and we figured that was the policy that we had to follow. Are there any jokes right, between you? the position groups that have to wear them and don't have to wear oh, them? Oh man, you know the DBs, you know, strutting around, they, you know, they they was the biggest group who really didn't want to wear it because they, they all about their swag and all that stuff. And The funniest thing, Kyle Pitts out there running around with it, he sure thought he wasn't going to wear it, but gotcha. <laughs> yep, yep, tight end, yeah, get on in here. <laughs> yep. Craig, I think you said during um, mini camp, you, you made a comment about this team feeling exceptionally close. Can't exactly remember what you exactly said, but why did you feel that then, and how do you feel like that continued into now? Yeah, I definitely feel like the camaraderie has been good and continue to grow as we started training camp. And it's just a, it's just a feeling that you get, you know, being around football for a long time, not even from a professional level, you know, college, high school, whatever it may be. You can tell when guys are getting along on the same page, and um, that's definitely what I feel here. And uh, that's why I'm so excited for this team and what we're going to show the world. I know last year uh, I asked you, like, goals coming into camp, and you said you wanted at least 10 sacks. Yeah. Do you have, what's your goal this year coming My into goal camp? really this year is just, you know, being the best me I could be, you know, and everything else, take care of itself. And um, I, I, I want to be the best leader I can be for this team, for this organization, and I also want to be one of the top players at my position, and that's something that I work on day in, day out. And uh, I know that my goals are attainable. And um, by the end of the day, if I just focus on being the best me I could be, everything else will take care of itself. Brady, there's so much competition for spots on this team, on this roster this year. Do you think that that's contributing to the high level of play of these first couple of days? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. You know, um, competition brings out the best in everybody in whatever industry that you're in. And um, that's, that's what's going on here. You know, nobody's complacent. You know, I feel like I'm comp competing every day, you know, for me to, to be, be my best self. And, to be to challenge myself to get to a better as a better leader, better player, whatever it may be, and um, you know, guys fighting for spots, and I mean, it's just making everybody better, you know. And the good thing about it is, you know, NFL is an organization with 32 teams, and you know, everybody don't make it here, but the work that you put in, work get around. So I mean, it's just a motivating place, a place of opportunity to where you get to go out here and go on the field, you know, whatever position that you at, and show the league what you can do, you know, and. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be some really really good opportunities for guys uh, coming up and me and myself as well. We got some, two joint practices this year, which, which is exciting, and um, so I'm I'm excited. Has anyone made any like plays out there that we haven't been able to see everything? I know it's two days that you're like, oh wow, okay, like this guy is impressing you already. Uh, you no, know, today Drake made a nice play. You can see why he was the first receiver taken and uh, start to start to uh, start the day off really good. And um, that's just one to catch my eye just early in camp. You know, being two days in. Um, and uh, but I mean it's the guys who've been making some you know great plays you know great giving great effort but with it also being early in camp we got to ramp it up you know and everybody getting their body used to be doing football things again and so it's gonna be a lot of great plays we made but uh, that's just what kind of one that it, that was a nice thing today. How do you uh, how do you manage the physicality? It's such a physical game where you play and this is an offensive line that's got a tremendous amount of competition going on there. Yeah. How much conversation do you have with those guys on the other side of the line about that, about the physicality of the game, and trying to replicate the best you can? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the tougher we are on each other, uh, the better it's going to be for us against competition. And um, the coaches, staff, and medical staff, they do a good job of being aware of that it is a high-taxing position, and but it's also a lot of competition, having big numbers on both sides of the ball, so you got to see guys go against each other. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the life we chose, you know, as linemen to – you got to be gritty. You got to be tough. You know, you can't be 
soft. You can't be, you know, out of shape. You know, it's going to take tough guys to go out there and compete against, you know, these lines across the league, you know. And uh, that's the exciting part about it on both ends. You know, it's great players on offensive line, great players on defensive lines. And um, we, we compete into – be able to have success against that, you know, every day. So we got to give, give, give the business to each other and just, and just try to be our best. Speaking, speaking of competition, um, we, we didn't have a great look at it and see exactly how we're doing, but it seemed like there was a drill kind of on the far field, yeah. competitive drill, all 90 guys watching. I don't remember seeing you guys do things like that before. I mean, maybe have. Um, but what was, what was that like to have a competitive drill with everybody watching? Yeah, you know, it was good. It was good. It was uh, unexpected. I didn't know it, but, um, but I mean, we went from lines to – linebackers, the, you know, tight ends, DBs, and wide receivers. And that was the uh, play that I was talking about. With Drake had a nice catch today. And, but, I mean, it's just guys good on good, you know, and uh, Coach make his expectations clear. He want the best players to produce, produce the best and lead the best, you know. And um, you got to come with it every day. And, you know, that he, he set the tone early by calling out some of our leaders in front of the whole team. And because uh, usually sometimes in the past where I've been in that position, it's been like guys, you know, trying to make teams, stuff like this and that. But he like start the tone of camp, right? And he called us out there and we had a nice competitive session. And I think it set the tone for practice and training camp. So it, it was really good. So he said, so was it Arthur Lindley saying, you know, you and you or kind of kind of getting guys in there? Yeah, a little mix, a little mix. But, you know, hey, man, you know, he, his show now he's going to do, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, quick, fast, in a hurry. So it was fun and um, he definitely expecting the best out of us. At the end, when you guys were running, was that just for conditioning, or was he making you run for something that you condition. guys did? We condition. We we put a lot of work in, and uh, everybody across the board, you know, whatever you want to do after, um, after we finish conditioning. But it's a known thing around here that we do do um, condition as a team, and I think it brings us together as well, you know, because you know after we put that hard work in practice, you know, we got to dig deeper, you know, and uh, so it's part it's part of something that we do. The D line going the year two. You know what? Um, I feel like for me the expectation always should be high, but at the end of the day, we got a highly, highly competitive group of guys with some spots that we need some high produ production out of, you know. And um, I'm gonna be just as hard as the guys on the guys as coaches. At the same time, I'm gonna come out here give an example day in and day out, you know, to know and see what the expectation is, you know. So I can't never slack and I always want to encourage them, but I'm also gonna hold guys accountable and um, pull the pull the best out of them because. Whoever line up out there on game day, the expectation is high, you know. Vet, rook, whatever it may be, you out there, you got to go to work, you know. And um, that's, 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 that's what we on. you see a different mindset in those guys coming into camp this year? Um, I mean, I always see a strong mindset. You know, I think it can be a misconception sometimes when on paper, you know, your productivity don't, don't match your expectations from the outside world. But, I mean, we, we don't have some guys who work hard and went hard. But at the end of the day, we do, we do have to be better as a unit. And um, so it's hard for me to say – that there's a whole different mindset and a whole different, because I mean I done played with some tough, you know, tough, hard-nosed dudes, you know, and um, so I'm I'm excited I'm excited to see what this group can do, and that's what we focus on this group this year and what we can do. I know this doesn't probably didn't matter to you, but you're truly the face of this franchise now. Yes, sir. Um, does 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 that bring a little bit more? And I know you welcome the pressure, but does that bring a little bit more to you for this camp? Uh, no, not necessarily. You know, I come out here and do my job day in and day out, and uh, you know. Uh, too much is given, much is required. So, I mean, that's how I live my life. And um, I think I've been uh, truly, truly blessed to be in the position that I am. And I don't take it for granted. And um, the work that I put in day out, day out is a you know testament to that. So I give it all up and um, let it reward me in the end. What's your two-day review? How things have gone? Things are going well, man. Um, obviously, we're kind of all getting acclimated right now. Um, just trying to, you know, Perfect the plays and um, get acquainted with each other. And, you know, get the, the tempo down and the plays down. And, but I feel like we're just taking it one day at a time. You, you thought coming in that you were going to be a good fit in this offense. Yes. You've seen it a few practices now. Yes. What? How do you feel about it? And do you, do you still think that? And why? Yes. Um, I still do think I'm, I'll be a good fit in this offense. Um, like I said uh, the last time, you know, this, this offense is made for receivers like my type, bigger bodies who can you know, make plays across the field and down the field and all that type of stuff. So, you know, two days into camp, I feel like, you know, this offense will be good for me. And it's all up to me about how I, you know, how hard I work on learning the plays and uh, getting acclimated to the system and just taking, receiving the coaching, so. Biggest wide receiver room you've ever been in when you look around and see, I mean, a lot of guys that you're looking eye to eye to, if not of that. Right, right, right. Um, so I've only been in one other receiving room, so. 
Yeah, I would say this is the biggest one out for me. I mean, you might be like the small forward in this right, group right. at this point. Exactly. Um, um, have you found that the system has been easy to pick up, quick mm -hmm. to pick up, and and now that you're applying it, how is the application process going? Um, so we're two days in the camp. So mm -hmm. right now the system has been it's been okay. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the tempo is a little bit, I would say, slowed down right now. So. I feel like I'm doing well as of right now. We still have a long way to go, and I'm just trying to, you know, take it one day at a time. As more volume comes in, then you got to readjust and continue to, you know, absorb information and try to retain it. You've been through a couple of these camps now. What's your routine in terms of kind of stacking days and processes over the course of what's four or five weeks? Um, you know, everybody has their their small little things that they like to do to make themselves feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I just like to kind of take it one day at a time, man. Don't don't try to you know get too high, get too low. Just take it one day at a time. Enjoy the process and just enjoy what you do. Have fun. You, you really made a number of pretty big monumental plays when you were in Vegas. Do you feel like there's a chance to maybe up your catch volume here and maybe do kind of more of those special things? How are you looking at this opportunity? You think? I got a big chance to play 800 snaps, right. 70 catches. I, I, right. I don't know how you think about it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm one of those people who, who like to take it one day at a time. Obviously, there's a lot of opportunity out here for all the receivers on this roster. And, you know, I just want to, you know, take advantage of my opportunity when the ball comes my way. And hopefully, you know, good things happen when the ball's in your hand, it comes back to you. So just continue to do those things. Um, I'm going to ask about the makeup of the of the wide receiver room and just right. you got guys like Kyle as well. I mean, just right. the, the size aspect of it is it, right. is it cool knowing you got a bunch of guys like yourself. Like yeah, man, it's cool knowing that we have just a, a, a big, big physical receiver room because, you know, when we go in to play other teams in this division who like to get up in your face and play press man, you know, it's going to be a fight at the line of scrimmage and guys aren't going to want to, you know, come up and battle with you all game. It's going to be tough for them. So. We look forward to that challenge, and we look forward to embracing like that big body, physical type of play style. Being this big and this different, have you guys looked back at like other offenses or other teams maybe in the past or something, to kind of see what they did and what you guys could gain, maybe copy from that or something along those lines? Um, you know, obviously, you know the saying is history repeats itself. Um, so you, you kind of got to look back at the receivers of past and, and kind of want to do the great things that they did. And, you know, we really hope we can accomplish those things. But, uh, you know, we got we to gotta put one foot in front of the other and try to be ourselves and make our, and make our own lane. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, let's just take it one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> right. one day. Do you have any particular receivers that you try to emulate? You know, when you're um, growing up right now? Man, I, being a South Carolina kid, I was always like a big fan of A.J. Green and DeAndre Hopkins and Alshon Jeffries. Like those people gave me hope that I could, you know, be an NFL receiver. So, you know, shout out to those guys for, you know, you know, inspiring me as a child. And um, yeah. I know you said keep it one day at a time, but Drake was right. talking about how he feels like the chemistry with him and mm -hmm. Desmond and Marcus is, mm -hmm. is really going really well at this point. I mean, where do you feel like that's at? Um, I feel like, you know, the chemistry is going really well. Desmond and Marcus are really easy to get along with. They communicate really well. They're, they're kind of a little bit of perfectionists, so I love that about them. And I feel like we're just all growing as a group, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Drake, is, he's a really special player, and he, I, he's going to be really great. I was going to ask, what is, what's your kind of observations that you've seen on him so far? Any stories maybe that you have um, with him so far? I just, no stories. He's kind of like a, a subtle, stay-out-of-the-way type of guy, and I respect that. But just on the field, man, he, he, he really pops out at you. He moves very well in and out of breaks for a bigger receiver. He's, he's very shifty. He's not, he kind of reminds me of like a shiftier version of Mike Evans down there in Tampa Bay. So much respect to that kid, and I can't wait to see him grow and just blossom into the great player I know he's going to be. Another kid that everyone talks about on this team is obviously Kyle Pitts. What's mm -hmm. it like working with him and seeing him do his thing? The unicorn, man. He, he, one of a kind, honestly. I, w I was in Las Vegas with a, another great tight end in Darren Waller. And, um, you know, they're, they're different types of play style, but um, just similar in just the rarity of player and person. You know what I'm saying? So special. Because you've kind of come in on this team, you've been on another team, obviously. I mean, what's kind of the vibe around this team, and why is it maybe different than other ones you've been on? Um, the atmosphere, man. The the camaraderie here, 
in the locker room, the guys, they, they really get along with each other. They re they're not afraid to kind of just chop it up, talk, have fun with each other. And I really love that about that, about them and this group. And then when we come out on the, on the field, man, everybody's competing. You know, it's like college football again. You're kind of, you're talking trash, you know, it's hot. You're getting after it. So it, it's real gritty when it gets on the field. But in the locker room, it's a family atmosphere. So I really love that about this place. It's kind of funny you mentioned that because we talked to CP the other day about how he wanted to come back here so bad in the offseason because he felt like a kid again playing football, right. having fun. I mean, right. it's funny that you mentioned that right. just kind of unprompted. It seems like everyone feels that. Exactly, because that, that's the atmosphere that you get in this in this, um, in this this system. And it's just, you know, it, it's it's easy to see it when you walk in the building and when you come through here, man. It's so much just love and respect between teammates, coaches, and staff. And I really just love that about this place, man. And I'm happy that I'm here. In your mind, is that like a Arthur Smith and a coaching staff kind of thing? Or what kind of creates that? I mean, obviously, you got to, you know, say they had part in it because they selected the players who are in this building. So I feel like, you know, everybody play, everybody who contributes played a little hand in that. The players, the coaches, the staff, everyone. Kind of dreamed of and imagined of making, you know, an NFL training camp? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it was tough, grueling, um, still going through it, figuring out the ways uh, of just how to be a pro exactly and, and, and how to maneuver through all of it. And uh, I think we're doing that pretty well as a group. What's the biggest difference between college, you know, getting ready for the season versus training camp practices? It's football all day. Um, and you got to be a pro with taking care of your body. Uh, the days are a little bit more grueling, a little bit more longer with meetings and, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, so like I'm saying, at the end of the day, just being a, a, the ultimate pro you could possibly be. How are you feeling from mini camp to training camp? I mean, do you feel like it's a little bit better having gone through that mini camp rep already? Oh, definitely, definitely. Things have slowed down. Um, not as much as I want them to be. Uh, but at the same time, they have slowed down. And again, this is a work in progress. And it's what, like day two of camp, you know? So uh, we're going in the right direction. I'll say that, yes. Greg, do you like the aspect of just being able to just focus on the Like you said, it's professional, so it's just football, football, football. Is that, do you like that difference? It's a dream come true. I mean, just to play ball for my job is, is something special in my eyes. And uh, every day to go out there and just think about football and play football is, is really, really fun. You and Desmond worked out a lot with each other in the off season. I mean, does that kind of translate onto this field during training camp? Definitely. Um, and it's not even the training part. It's just, you know, hanging out with him, chilling with him, getting to know him as, as, as a brother, you know. Uh, that's going to be my teammate. And um, I just want to get to know him on a personal basis, and that's what we did back in Cali. How much of, you know, this time when you guys are in the dorms and kind of hanging out together is that, not just the on-field stuff, but as a team kind of getting to know each other? Yeah, just like I'm saying, that gel, that chemistry, um, if we can have that bond off the field, then on the field it's going to be that much stronger. What is it like, you know, after hours when you guys are done with your recovery and stuff? I mean, are people playing Xbox? Desmond said he doesn't really do that, but like, what's kind of, what's everyone kind of doing? Yeah, I don't really play video games either, but I hear a lot of banter going around about, you know, who wants to come to this dorm to get this Madden fade, all this stuff. So, um, yeah, there's definitely these guys hanging out, um, doing friendly competitions and things like that. So if you don't play video games, what do you do? You know, I... Like I'm saying, this is my second day here, or not second day here, but second day out. I got to keep on studying the playbook and make sure I'm on top of my stuff at all times. So I do that, and plus the days are so long that by the time I hit the bed, I'm out. <laughs> How yeah. early are you waking up and going to bed? Early I'm waking up and going to bed, pretty much right when I get to the dorms, and then whenever I got to be here for meetings and weigh-ins, yeah. Uh, you talked about working out with Desmond Day. Do you feel like you have a little bit more of a connection with Desmond versus Marcus Mariota? Did you work out with Marcus at all in the offseason? No, nah, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, they're both so new to me. I haven't been playing with either of them ever. So um, definitely getting a groove for both of them, and we're steady going in the right direction on, on both of them. So. Do you feel any similarities? I know like coming in that they – my mic is not working. Oh. Um, uh, I know. <laughs> just took it from me. Um, <laughs> I've been demoted. Um, I know coming out, some people compared, uh, compared Desmond and Marcus Mariota kind of like being similar. Do you kind of see that on the field or feel that in their throws? Or can you kind of describe what like the differences are between them? Um, definitely two mobile quarterbacks who can run at any time they want to. But at the same time, they got great pocket presence. Um, and I think they're just guys you want leading your team at the end of the day. And so that's what I see right now. How excited are you just to get that first preseason game that coming up? You know, I know it's a few weeks, but to actually get to experience an NFL game. Yeah, I think everything's a first for me right now, so I'm excited for every little thing. And um, I think that's what I took for granted in college is I didn't didn't really look at those things that much. And so now I'm just um, loving the grind and, and going after it every day. How are you adjusting to the heat? 
Uh, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> you talked after the draft about joining Kyle Pitts, that that was something exciting for you. Now that you've kind of had a little bit more time with him, have you learned anything from him, or what's that kind of going like? Yeah, you know, um, he's always in my ear here and there, um, making sure I'm doing the right things and uh, giving me tips that he didn't know when he was here. So uh, it's, it's very, very good. And just like Ritter and, and Marcus and all, just all the guys, I'm trying to build a connection with him and, uh, and you know, get right with my brother. What kind of tips has he given you? Anything specific? that? Just little things here and there whenever he could get to me, you know. Um, so, yeah. What do you think of, I know your group isn't worried, but some of the guys are wearing, I call them mushroom hats. I think they're like burning hats. <laughs> what, what do you just think of some of the guys wearing them? Is it different watching them have to wear it? or? No, it's not different. I'm just happy I don't got a bobblehead. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys give them a little bit of, you know, make fun a little bit? No, I mean, I kind of feel for them because the helmet gets a little hot, they were saying. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, player protection is a huge thing. So, I mean, if we could get, have our guys safe on the field like that and have them ready for the games, then by all means, they could be bobbleheads all they want. <laughs> Was that a thing you had to do in college, wear those shells on your... Not me, no. Okay. Um, they just brought it back to SC, actually. Oh, uh, okay. So I've seen when I went back to practices and things like that. Great. You got a couple good cornerbacks to go up against in AJ and Casey. Does that help your development just as a player to go up against that kind of quality? Most definitely. Um, all the, the DB room is, is deep, you know. Um, and to be able to go against up go against those guys and, and really show my arsenal and, and try new things against them is going to help me in the long run. And that goes for pretty much everybody on the defense, you know. Again, this is all new to me. So um, just trying to get through it and, and showcase what I have. Do you feel like you're a better player than you were just, you know, a few months ago from being through all this that you've been with in the Falcons? Yeah, being that it's been football strictly for um, a couple months now, I definitely feel like I've grown in that aspect and, and matured too, for sure. And there's no limitations with you at all. I know you had the ankle, you know, coming in, but are you 100% like able to pull ball or are they still kind of watching your reps a little bit? Nah, I mean, shoot. Ever since uh, I got here in OTAs, it's been full ball. I told them that there should be no restrictions on me. I feel, I feel good. I feel great. Cool. Yeah. In your personal experience, how long does it take for a receiver and a quarterback to truly gel the chemistry without, you know, you guys talking to each other, just knowing where each other is on the field? How long has that taken? Depends on depends on the type of player and type of person they are. Um, you could gel with somebody pretty quick, or you cannot at the same time. And I feel like we're on the opposite end of that, and we're gelling pretty well, pretty quickly. Um, and it's just the players we are too. We could uh, we can do. And I wouldn't say that, but we can adjust to things a little bit easier. I think in in our ways. So um, yeah, I think we're doing that pretty quickly here. What's it been like watching what Felipe Franks is doing? Um, Oh my gosh. Uh, what Felipe Franks has been doing, trying to get in uh, the tight end position, just as a position player. What he's trying to do for quarterback to, to tight end. Special. Um, just to be that athletic and come in in the league and be a quarterback, and then all of a sudden, you could be deemed as a tight end and actually go out there and make plays. I mean. That right there just showcases his athleticism and his mindset and focus. I mean, not a lot of people could can do that, you know. So, uh, props to him for sure. So he's making plays because we don't. You sometimes we can't see everything you guys are doing. So he's making some plays out there. Yeah, everybody's making plays. Mm -hmm. Yep.